itself. But first, joining me now live from Washington are Tennessee Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn and Georgia Congressman Phil Gingry, who is also a medical doctor. Guys, welcome to the program. Good to be Sean. with you, Sean. Good to be with you. All right, let's start with, do they have the votes? I don't think that they do have the vote, Sean. I think that what you're seeing play out is the people are weighing in on this. Many times what we're hearing when they're talking to us and getting on the phone with us or like the Tea Partiers that were on the Hill today, they feel like that many representatives have uh, betrayed their trust. They feel like they're very disrespectful of the citizens and that they're not representing the view that they have. So every day that passes, it is hard. Harder for Speaker Pelosi to get those votes. Yeah, I Phil, now I talked to uh, Michelle Bachman earlier today. She said that if if the bill gets killed this week, she thinks this bill is killed. Do you agree with that assessment? Sean, I do. I, I, I really do. And I think Jim Clyburn uh, is probably right when he said that uh, they may not have the votes. And uh, if he's thinking that they can come back after an Easter recess of two weeks and a replay of what happened last summer during the August recess, he's got another thing coming. I think if, this, if they don't get the votes uh, by Friday or Saturday, and of course the president has his drop dead date so he can fly off on Air Force One to Australia. Uh, and and I'm, I agree with my good friend Marsha, and, 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 uh, who serves on the Energy and Commerce Committee with me, uh, I don't think they have the votes, despite what Ms. Pelosi and uh, Steny Hoyer and others say. I think Jim Clyburn is right. Uh, they're, they're six or eight uh, votes short, and I don't think they're going to get them. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think so. You know what's amazing about this is if they had the votes, I think they'd be on the House floor. I, I think they, they Absolutely. would. Absolutely. Yeah, you agree with that, Congresswoman. Yeah, I guess, I guess here's yeah, I the, do too. Here, all right, well, so we all, we're all in agreement. All right, now here's the point. Um, if they try after the Cornhusker kickback, af after they try and take care of their union buddies, the Louisiana Purchase l reconciliation, uh, Congresswoman, if they now go to the, the slaughter solution, in other words, that, that House members would actually vote for a rule change so they never have to vote on the, uh, vote on the bill, it's confusing. So you have to go home to your constituents. And say to your constituents, oh, no, 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 I only voted for the rule change. Do you think that'll uh, fly? Oh, not at all. Sean, think about this. They're going to go home and they're going to say, hey, not only did I not read the 2,700-page bill, but we let it pass without a vote. Article 1, Section 7 of the Constitution. I think that action is in violation of that section of the Constitution. I fully believe that people that do that and go home and then try to justify that to their constituents, I think that it's going to be Katie bar the door. People are watching this vote very carefully. It will be the vote that marks a person's career. Yeah, no, I, th I agree with you, Congresswoman, completely. Now, Congressman, uh, you're a doctor. This is what you do for a living. Now, I I've examined the Senate bill, and they're not going to be able to change the bill, uh, as, as my understanding, because they're using the reconciliation process. But you've got nearly, what, a half a trillion dollars in Medicare cuts. You've got a dramatic right. expansion of government, including 159 new offices, agencies, and, and programs they're going to add to the bill. It's going to raise taxes by $500 billion. You've got these corrupt backroom deals. What, what does it do to medicine from your vantage point? Uh, well, Sean, it, it can literally destroy it. Uh, as you point out, $500 billion cut, that's about a 10% cut to Medicare each and every year over the next 10 years. Uh, and, and $120 billion of that is to the Medicare Advantage program. That's about an 18% cut of that program, and 25% of our seniors pick that as their choice because it covers wellness and preventive care and screening and, and that sort of thing. So $500 billion cut to Medicare that's $35 trillion worth of unfunded liability over the next 50 years, and then another $500 billion worth of tax increases. The American people are looking at that and they're saying, wait a minute now, you, you, that's a hundred, uh, a, 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 a trillion, three hundred uh, billion deficit for one year, uh, and you're going to add another trillion dollars worth of debt to 12 trillion. Uh, no wonder the economy is so bad and 16 million people 
people are out of work and we have 10 percent unemployment. So this is all about the economy and jobs. This is a job killer and, uh, and in fact some of the physicians will be losing their jobs because they're so frustrated uh, that there's no fix to the, the doc payment in this bill. Uh, uh, Sean, it's an absolute mess. You know what I don't understand, Congresswoman? You're, you're there. You, you know these Democrats. I assume you probably even have lunch with them every once in a while. What I don't understand is, are they not hearing or understanding the mood of the country? Are they not understanding the American people? I think that they have underestimated the um, the way the American people are watching this bill, and they are watching very closely. They are very upset. They're frustrated. They're angry. They feel as if uh, members have been very disrespectful when offices have been called or contacted. And you know, Sean, no, but, but they wait, are paying close attention. But why yeah. would they then vote? You know, basically to end their career? Because I think that's what they're doing. And it is it is something that I, I think they have underestimated. They don't think that people are that upset. They say once they understand the bill that they will be supportive of it. But Dr. Gingry will tell you we tried repeatedly in committee to put things in there that would protect seniors, that would allow those that are uninsured to have access, that would actually get down the cost. When the bill left committee, Speaker yeah. Pelosi stripped him out before it went to the House floor. All right, guys, good to see you both. Thank you uh, both for being here.